Cool. So last week we talked about how to set your website up for more referrals from Google. We had a great response and a lot of great feedback. There were a couple questions, and and most of these are kind of paraphrases because we we've heard we heard them kind of more than once over and over and just wanted to just touch base on them and kind of talk about it and discuss it a little bit. Um, and we thought, you know, we'd bring it to the podcast so everyone can benefit from them. Uh, one thing that you've mentioned in your, you know, first of all, the one thing that you mentioned in, in the blog, on the podcast, kind of through in passing and in your YouTube videos is you talked about recently you went down and we you pruned some content from Easy Agent Pro. And I think this is often gets confused and I don't, you know, I wanted to hear, hear your response to this. Isn't quantity better? Like, don't you want as much quantity as possible when it comes to content on, on the web? Yeah. So here's, here's how that kind of works. If you look at any chart, you could just Google, um, number of blogs to leads and that would show you just a ton of different charts. Uh, if you Google that, you're going to see that you have over 200 blog posts, which isn't that hard to, to get to. That's only a year. Um, but if you have over 200, you're going to get most of the leads in your marketplace, right? And so like, let's, let's take that as a, a standpoint. What Google is looking for is, did, did we use the bowling ball analogy on this, on the show in the past? We have used it on the blog. Yeah, so on the blog. So, so Google is looking at your site as a ball. If you have one blog, you're kind of a marble. And if you have a ton of blogs, you're kind of a bowling ball. Okay? And so it, let's imagine that there's just this, like, this really um, flimsy, cheap mattress. And you set the bowling ball on it. And then you set the, um, the marble on it. And then pour a bunch of water. The water being website visitors. All that water is going to go to the bowling ball, right? And so the the thing is it, people like, oh, I'm going to SEO this one article. Mm -hmm. And you're kind of building like a, a diving board that like dives into a pool with no water. Like it's standing on one thing. You've got Even if you build it absolute perfectly, like just a little bit of wind and the wrong type of weather and it's going to fall over. What, what you want to do is you want to scale up and get as many blog posts as possible and then prune the heck out of it. It's just like it, – it's like – of a want you know a winery or like a vineyard you want to get a ton of of vines so you have a ton of grapes to make good wine and jelly and everything with but then you need to prune it right mm -hmm. so get a ton of stuff up there your first one's going to suck your second one's going to suck even more your third one's going to be a little better and then go prune it after you have a hundred and what you're going to find and, and what we found is your traffic from google actually goes up 10 20 percent when you prune that and you start you know saying that no this is the one really good seo article or maybe we put three of our seo articles together on one um, really good one. It, it really helps your traffic that way. So, so you need two things. It's qual quantity and quality. Um, the way I like to do it and the way I recommend you do it is like you write three blogs a week for four months and then that's going to give you a ton of content and then you can scale back, take a breath, stop the sprint, turn into a marathon and then start pruning it, making one great blog a week. But you really got to you really got to perform that CPR on your site to get it off the ground at the beginning gotcha. to make so, like seven metaphors in there. <laughs> <laughs> right. So and and with the bowling ball and the marble, like you can add more marbles together, but still to get the effect of the bowling ball, you kind of have to melt them into one massive thing instead of just a whole bunch of disassociated yeah or even like to take the bowling ball like like, like when, when they're making the bowling ball mm -hmm. what's the first thing they do they make a square an abnormal shape bigger than the ball that they want right mm -hmm. and so all you got to do is like make this big huge like this big huge chunk of marble and then after it's big enough start sh like start shaping it into the site you know to do right. th that's really what you're trying to do and that's what google wants and that's what really gets results on seo we should we should add that we know nothing about making bowling balls oh yeah that's we'll, we'll, we'll start a bowling ball podcast in, yeah. in yeah. The next next fall Sean so and do I will not take up do not quote us on balls. any of our bowling ball manufacturing <laughs> knowledge here yeah. so but it, it's it's a metaphor. That'd be a great podcast. <laughs> I I would listen to it probably for like probably for like a week. I or think two, you get five episodes out of it. <laughs> so okay, so um, 
so and that goes into the next question and we get this a lot and because usually i mean the things that we're talking about on the blog this is stuff that no one else is talking about so there's a lot of people who are just like whoa, whoa hold on a second what so uh the next question is, should i create new content or update previous articles um we've talked about both on the blog when what what should, what should be going through the mind of someone when they have that option in there right so what you're basically trying to do is 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 tell Google that like you are an authoritative source about whatever. Mm-hmm. And so if if you have an old article called the 10 best restaurants in uh Pennsylvania, which would be a really exclusive list. Uh <laughs> oh. you, you really you, like that's something you should update, right? Update that once a quarter, once half, once every other year, once a year, whatever you want. Put it on your iCal and then say just change up this list. Uh but if you're if you're like starting something and it's like the best things to do in March 2016 or if you're talking about a new topic that hasn't been talked about before, you should have that new one. So there are probably about 100, 200 new topics you should write about. And then there's a lot like of, of those those posts that you can just keep updating. Tyler, so that leads us into our next question. Should I create new content or update previous articles? Yeah, and that's a good question. You know, we're all dealing with like a limited time frame. You know, you got to answer clients' emails and you've got to spend time on marketing and sales and, you know, everything else you have to do to run a business too. And so it, it really the question comes down to like, what do you need more? Like, do you, do you need to do CPR and get your site up and running? Or is your site up and running and you're on page two or three or four for a main keyword? Um, like, which one of those situations are you in? If you're on page two or three or four, I'd suggest updating that one first. And if you're, you know, your site just got launched or maybe it was launched six months ago and you have just let it sit there, I'd literally think of it as performing CPR and posting three times a week as a post, as an Insta farm or something and getting that stuff out there. Just like, just like 90 day challenge it or like, uh, you know, nine, what's that, what's that workout thing? That's really intense P90X or something like, like P90X yeah, P90, yeah. it for like two months and then like go back to normal. I just, I really think right. that the biggest problem most real estate agents, most business owners face in their lives is never being able to be ridiculous. You should be absolutely ridiculous with the posting to your website when you first get it. You should be absolutely ridiculous and then scale it back to something that's real. And so that's that, that's what I would do. Yeah, it it, it kind of sounds like you're either like depending on where you're at, you either need to go to the gym because you need to to build up a little bit more, or you need to go to the surgeon and you have to go in there and dissect. And so if you're already if you're already ranking for a certain keyword or so, going in there like you know, with precision and building it up and boosting it up? Or do you need to just build general, like, muscle going to the gym? So it's, it seems kind of like the gym or the surgeon, depending on what you need. Exactly, exactly. That's a, that's a good way of putting it. All right, so uh, the, the next question we got here, which is, you know, along the same, along the same, uh, same vein there, uh, basically the example is, should I create five, should I focus on creating small posts or, or, or big posts, basically, should, like, should I create five small pieces of content or one large piece yeah, of content? That's a good one. So once again, it depends. Uh, are you trying to get content from Facebook or are you trying to make Google work for you? Uh, if, if you're going after Google, long. If you're going after Facebook, probably a bit shorter. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's pretty simple. I think of like the uh, the, na- the the late night shows like Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon. Like when they're on TV, you're looking at a good 30, 60 minutes worth of content. Yeah. But then the next day, they parse it all up. They make little viral videos out of it. They do one section at a time. Yeah, and to get more uh, – like so- I was really general there. And to get more meat and potatoes into that, if you study what we do at Easy Agent Pro, um, you'll notice we do one or two just like like – like no one's going to read this amount of content per week. Like we just published a 7,000 word article on real estate websites last week. Um, And then if you look at what else we do, we do like pages that literally have maybe a hundred words in a free download. That's just insanely valuable. Like who gives away postcard templates to real estate agents? Us. That's it. I can't think of anyone else that makes new stuff and just freaking gives it away. And like, not like like that's what you need to do to be successful on Facebook. You need to just make like 
just the most freaking valuable real estate investing cash flow analysis spreadsheet and give it away and run ads left and right for that thing. Like say, like you can lead lock it, you can lock it down and like get emails for that, but just make it and make it like this just insane mind blowing spreadsheet that you spent three hours on and then give it away and write a hundred words about it and then run Facebook ads to it or write a 7,000 word post about doing real estate investing in Pennsylvania and attack Google, right? Do you have flip flops? Do which one you would, whichever one you want. I got you. Okay, so just to reiterate, the 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 higher quantity of small posts are for Facebook. The larger pieces of content is for Google. Yeah, exactly. Yep. All right. So, and then finally, the last question, which I don't know if we've if we've covered here on the podcast at all, but how does and and obviously it's not that important, but how does ranking on Bing or Yahoo? differ than Google. Yeah. So we talked a lot about Google, but Google's obviously the the big gorilla in the room. They're gonna own the universe as they launch their cars and Google Fiber and their phone network and everything. So, you know. But um the the thing with Bing and Yahoo is they've actually combined into one entity. Um, and you can it's it's just Bing Webmaster Tools and it controls both of them. And you can go set up a free profile. If you have a lead site, just use the Find Me app and get your, um, you, you can put the pixel for Bing in there and you can actually also uh, get your site map and register it with Bing. Uh, they're a lot more, I've studied the difference between rankings on the two of them and it is a little different. Bing tends to rank long standing pages, like pages that have been alive and not updated better and Google tends to rank things that are fresher, updated more frequently, and more popular. Does that make sense? There's a little bit of a difference there. Right, right. And, and, and Google looks at seasoned pages and length of time and stuff like that. But it just seems like Bing is going more towards maybe the, tr- the tried and true. It seems that way. Yeah, I, I've been running some... Uh, there, there's this app I use that measures rankings according to Bing and, and all that. And it seems that the longer it's on the site, like Google, it goes up right away. And then if you don't update it, it slowly sinks over time. Bing, mm. it seems to just always go up. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, is there any other, like I'm, I'm, I'm obviously Google and Bing. I'm trying to think, is there any other search engines that Not people really. use? I mean, there's DuckDuckGo, you know, that's, that's for those people really concerned about privacy, which is a legitimate concern. I think. Um, I think DuckDuckGo is powered by Bing, though. I think so. Uh, but yeah, I would set up your Bing. Like if you're – once you get over five, 6,000 visitors a month, getting closer to 10, I would really set up that Bing Webmaster Tools. It's a 20-minute it's a job you can do as you're watching, you know, like this week. You're watching the NCAA tournament. Just, just knock <laughs> it out, you know, and um, get that going. And then um, just just see how it goes, you know. All right, cool. Well, you know, that covers that. If anyone's got any other questions, definitely forward those over to us. Hit us up in on uh, Facebook or at the blog. Uh, but that, you know, that, that gives us a general general overview of some of the things and how to implement the things that we were talking about last week. So I hope that helps you guys and I hope that helps your real estate businesses. Um, if you have any other questions or su- suggestions, leave a comment on our episode page. And then for more content or to get started with your own lead site and to join the EAP community, schedule a demo at easyagentpro.com. Click on one of the boxes or the buttons throughout that. Um, they <laughs> should be sliding in and, and popping up there. So yeah. easyagentpro.com. Cool. Thanks for listening to In The Lead. If you've enjoyed the show, be sure to subscribe in iTunes or Stitcher and leave us an honest review. For more great content like this, check out our blog at easyagentpro.com.